Please make some noise for Mila J. Thank you, guys. Y'all saw that video, right? That's pretty lit. Thank you. I have I, fun making it. I wish they showed the new crib video. I know. Well, why didn't we? I don't know. Maybe <laughs> we can get it on at the end. That was a smash. Thank you. The song is a smash. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So, I mean, I saw the... I'm looking at the video. You directed it yourself, yes? Yes, I did. <sighs> I tried to dabble in the directing uh, field, you know? You know, expanding the portfolio? <laughs> yeah, I had to add that to the portfolio. You know, you got to do everything nowadays. <laughs> I mean, you got to be a one-stop shop. Yes. For dopeness, essentially. And I saw you had your, uh, the braids kind of strung up. When you were yes. shooting the video, were you ever afraid of just tripping and bam? Well, the thing is, because I was pulling away, it was like very... Uh, it was measured like perfectly. So like, but if I would move, like I would pull myself out the wall, yeah. then we would have to start the whole scene over to like put me back in the wall. So they're like, Jamila, stop moving so much. I'm like, but it's hard because you want to come to the camera, yeah. but you forget that you're nailed into the wall. So <laughs> it, was, it was fun though, it was fun. <laughs> Why did the idea to direct it in this way, to do the portray this way? What were you trying to, because yeah, I saw there was other shots of you packing up, you know, you're moving out. So talk about right. that. Right, um, well, I, for, the, for that particular scene, it was just more about, like, showing, like, how you can be kind of stuck mentally in a place, even though, like, you know, you're trying to move on, but it's just, like, and then, obviously, New Crib, it's just, like, I'm moving because I'm, like, okay, I can't take it. Everything reminds me of you, the walls, the bathroom, you know what I mean? And so it was just kind of, like, showing those two aspects. Um, just, and then the hair just was more like an artsy way of doing it, you know what I mean? Well, in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, trans, it translated very well. Thank you. Um, one thing, so Joe Biden had a tweet that said, Mila J just dropped it out, uh, an EP, and no one ain't tell me. Like, dopamine is dope. Thank you so much. Yeah, so yeah, to correct that, yeah, because it's not an album, even though it is 13 songs, but yeah. I just wanted to do that because I feel like in the past, I have done EPs and mixtapes, but I haven't done like a, a longer body of work, you know, and so I kind of wanted to give, you know, people a chance to kind of get more into me, um, so that's why I went with the EP with the bonus track, so it's like 13 songs, um, three videos, more coming, Ooh. you know what I mean? And yeah, shout out to Joe Budden for... Uh, saying that thank you this is nice yeah i was feeling it one song i really liked was uh lit and the, the yes. funny thing about the word lit i feel like it's gonna stick around for a long time you know what it's funny that you say that because when i'm recording the song i'm like oh you know obviously like i i say that all the time lit but i'm like you know sometimes when you're recording you're like uh, i don't want to use a trendy word because you feel like you know like certain words you know is gonna play out but when i did it it's funny i said the same thing i was like no but lit lit's gonna stay around just like bomb like i'm from la we call everything bomb um, you know, like, your outfit's bomb. You know, your music you like's bomb, and it ain't played out. So I feel like lit is going to be like bomb. So we're going to see. <laughs> In New York, we say, all right, boom, you know? Boom, Or exactly. dead ass. Exactly. Oh, you can say ass on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I oh. just did, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's lit. <laughs> That's super Yeah, you know, Because I feel like lit describes, like, um, Kind of like a feeling, like a mood, like a good party, you know? It does. And that's what the song reminds me of, just like a real, just like, player's ball, you know, in my mind. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> so you come from a very, very musical family. Had a little uh, Gary, Indiana in uh, South Central L.A., you know, there's yeah. five of y'all. Talk about yes. growing up, having a studio in the garage. Yeah, I mean, well, shout out to my daddy. You know, I, I definitely... Uh, it's because of him of why how we even got in you know into music. He he wasn't like a musician like out in the world, but like you know probably his uh, his hobby was music. And um, yeah, he turned our he converted our garage into a full studio with the booth and the whole thing. And so you know whenever we wanted to play around, you know what I'm saying, we didn't take it serious when we were like little little. But you know those were kind of the building blocks of us just kind of getting that training and being able to go and record in the studio. And um, yeah. It was it was cool. Definitely a, a dope outlet. My mom was an art teacher, mm -hmm. so we just kind of always had a creative outlet um, growing up. One, one thing I really love is just the family aspect of it. Like, just knowing that you and your sister, Janae and Miyoko, just, you know, you guys are together. And, every, and all, all those other interviews, everybody's like, do y'all fight? It's like, no, we don't fight. Like, right, it's like they pull cool. it out of thin air. I'm like, where did you get that from? Like, yeah, we're, we're cool. We support each other. You know, we've all grown up doing music, and so it's just dope to see us all, you know, doing our thing, so... Yeah. So you are like I so so you like to frame yourself as an entertainer because you have these dance ensembles and all of your videos and you started dancing at a very young age. Yes. Talk about going to dance academy, doing ballet, tap, all that. But you yeah. really were into hip hop. Yes, that was definitely my favorite. Um, so growing up, 
I had a whole bunch of energy. My mama was like, okay, you need to do something. So she put us in, um, in, in dance class and a dance company called All That Dance. Shout out to my teacher, Miss Ruthie. Um, and it was, but it was African tap dance, um, ballet, jazz, um, and then hip hop. And then that's the one that I liked the most. I, I really liked ballet, but it was more so because I was like naturally flexible. So everyone kind of forced me to do ballet, but I was like, this is too like disciplined. I want something that's just kind of more wild. So um, hence, I got more into um, hip hop um, and everything kind of took off from there. Like we, you know, had dance agents as a child and that's kind of how we got our taste into the industry by booking like, you know, music videos and whatnot, dancing behind other artists. So. And you danced and were performing in a number of groups, but you yes. took some time off to kind of find yourself as yes. like a solo artist. Yes. And I feel like many people may not understand how important that is before embarking on your solo career. So let's talk about like what it was like being in Girl, then leaving these groups, and then now just being Mila J. Right. Um, well, growing up, yeah, I was always in groups, plus big family. I'm just group, team, everything. Um, and, you know, and unfortunately they didn't work out, but I did still want to pursue music. I think before it was kind of like, um, I was so used to being in groups that I was kind of, I, I would say I was definitely scared to be solo, you know, because it was like I was always, you know, with my sisters or my friends and our groups, like every group I was in, like we got along actually, you know what I'm saying? So it was fun. Like, and I actually still miss that aspect of just, you know, of, of traveling and being on the road with the team. Um, but once they didn't work out, you know, I, I had to ask myself like, okay, well, you know, you want to be a musician. So, you know, you have to take that leap and try it on your own, you know? And so that's kind of what I did. Um, I definitely needed that break because in like, you know, in a group you are, it's about the group as a whole versus what do you personally want to sing about? You know, how do you personally want to dress? Um, so in a group you can kind of, I don't say you get lost, but you know, it's all what's best for the group and what the image is. And so you're not really just completely all about you, you know what I mean? And so I had to f figure out who I was, what my voice was as a solo artist. Um, plus when I was in the groups, I was more like the rapper. Like I never would have thought in a million years, you tell me like I'm singing, I'm like, what? Cause only my family knew that I sung. Like I was more so shy to sing. Like I always wanted to rap. And so it took me a while to have to get used to, you know what I'm saying? The idea of the spotlight being on me singing as well. So that time was spent well just discovering who Mila J is. <laughs> nice, nice. So in that process of discovering where you, who you were, what were the things that you did? Like, are you a spiritual person? Do you meditate? Like, because you were right. Like, it is for the, 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 the benefit of the group. But now when you're just Mila J, it's not that easy. Right, it's not. I mean, you definitely have to sit alone a lot with your thoughts. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you know what I mean? Even just like, this is so random, but just like, like even like living alone, like I always tell people, like, if you've never lived alone, you need to do it. Like, because you just find out so much about yourself. You know what I mean? Like, even just like, okay, what is it that you actually like to watch? What do, when, when you're hungry, what do you want to go, you know, eat? Versus like, oh, what do you want? You know, you're always able to like rely on other people and it just kind of makes you just literally focus on yourself, like that solitude. So what did you um, learn about yourself? Um, what did I learn about myself? <laughs> That's a hard question. Um, what did I learn about myself? I don't know. It's in, it's on dopamine. <laughs> That's, <what> I, <laughs> That's I, I don't know. I'm not good on the spot, but, um, we'll come back to, we'll yeah, back well, to we got to come back to that one. <laughs> <laughs> so you were at Motown for a little bit, but this is completely independent. Yes, it you is. You're in complete control of this whole situation. Yes. Control. Was that scary? Um, it, it is, but at the same time, it's something that I know I just, you have to do, you know what I mean? Um, and, and, and go with it, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the universe and, and it is what it is. And I'm just like more excited, I would say more than scared, you know what I mean? So. I love how you managed to kind of weave in this singing and rap mm -hmm. influence on the whole album. And this one song I really love, especially it's called Fuckboy. Yes. And, <laughs> and it seems to have resonated a lot. Uh, talk about the impact of when that dropped and did you get any good responses from it from the fans? Yes. Actually, I got a, a lot of good responses from that, especially, I mean, that was, I feel like I always have to give out, uh, you know, songs for, for my ladies. Like, you know, when I did my main and then Fuckboy, I was okay, this is a good, like, follow-up. Because I feel like every girl can relate to, you know, having dealt with a fuckboy. Can you de define it for anybody that may not know what a fuckboy um, is? You know, just it, in the best way possible, just someone who's just not honest, you know what I'm saying, just playing with people's feelings. And, and that's never cool. You know, you don't play with people's money and you don't play with people's feelings because you could get hurt. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's just not right. I feel like if, if you're an adult, you know, it's, nobody has time to play games. Like, be upfront and let me make the decision if I want to deal with the fuckboy or not. But, you know, when you being, you know, I call that a shady spirit. You know what I mean? So a real sneaky spirit. 
is a fuck boy. <laughs> <laughs> so in the course of you kind of progressing and learning about yourself, you went through a name change. You were in Japan. You were Japalonia for a little bit. Okay, so about that. I yeah. really, it wasn't like a real name change. At that time, um, even though, because I was Mila J, all of my social at that time was Japalonia. Okay. Um, but yeah, it came about because obviously I'm like obsessed with prints, um, Apollonia, mm -hmm. any vanity, we'll all of them. We'll get the prints for sure. Right. <laughs> and so, um, I, but I was in Japan at the time and, and with my friend and we were like, oh, like you could be like the, because I'm mixed with Japanese, like you're like the Japanese version, mixed version of Apollonia. So I was like, Japalonia. And it was kind of just like a joke. Um, but then I made all my social media that name. And so I think, like, the public kind of got confused, like, oh, is she changing her name? And I was like, no, no, it's not that serious. Like, it's just something that I play with, you know, so. So your mother's half Japanese? My mother's half, yeah, so I'm a quarter. Do you speak any Japanese? Uh, choto. <laughs> Wait, what is, how do you speak? That, that means a little. Oh. Um, <laughs> not because my grandfather did, no. Uh, he was actually raised in Compton, but. Your grandfather was a hustler. Uh, Tell us a, actually, that story is pretty good. Can you talk about his story coming to the United States? Well, yeah. Um, he came to the United States from Hawaii. Well, after concentration camps, he was in those. And um, they came after Hawaii a bit, and then they all relocated and were in Compton. And at that time, like, Compton was very, like, not how it is now, you know. Um, and then he's with my grandmother, you know, black woman, interracial couple. You know, no one would rent to them kind of situation. Um, but, yeah, they ended up there. And so my whole family was, like, kind of raised, like, Compton, Gardena, Carson area. Um, but then my mom had us in L.A. Yeah, I was born downtown California Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually this weekend, this past weekend was the 25th anniversary of the L.A. riots. Yes. And you would have been around like eight years old at the time. Yes. You remember anything? Man, you, from just, that? Oh, you just go put my business out there like that. <laughs> I'm just playing. Like you can Google everything. Now. <laughs> um, it's crazy. I actually remember it like literally like it was yesterday. Talk about Because where we lived, um, remember warehouse music? Where you could actually see, so you probably don't even know where Warehouse Music was like a big, you know, like it might Tower have been a West thing, or like Sam we Goody. Had, we had Sam Goody over here. Right, we had one right on the corner, but the warehouse by us was like popping. Like they, it would be when people still did in stores and like performed, like in the parking lot, like in like the biggest people would come there. Um, uh, it was like a boys' market. I just remember the warehouse though, and it was right on the corner, and like all of that was getting looted. It was a Foot Locker, and we're just looking on TV like, that's right on the corner. Like, this is crazy, you know? And then I remember like, um, we couldn't go outside because like the, it was so much smoke, and like there was soot all on the car, and it was it was a crazy time. But even for us, it was really crazy too. Like, we were more scared because it's like, you know, it was the racial tension and whatnot, and we knew like our route that my grandfather took. You know, he's a Japanese man. So we're like, at that time, we're like, we're not knowing like, you know, what's gonna happen. So we were just more like, nervous just watching the TV like, okay, he needs to get home so we know he's, you know, cool. But it was crazy. Like, I remember it like it was yesterday, literally. Wow. And it's actually beautiful that you tell it that way and that you hear it. You remember it so clearly. Yeah, so clear. And it's funny because, you know, L.A. and that whole South California is really important to you. Made in yeah. L.A. Made, made in L.A. Yes. It's Pig Latin, right? It is Pig Latin. And it was actually a nickname before, but then now it's weird because since that's like my... My artist name now, the people that used to call me that, they're like, it's weird to call you Mila Jane now because they feel like they're, you know, calling me a name that's like an artist name. But yeah, yeah it's Pig Latin, Mila J. So around that same time, you were in the Diamonds and Pearls video. Yes. For Prince. And I don't know if any of you have seen this video, but it is possibly the most angelic Prince video well, there's some really good ones, but this one's this one's crazy. And it's not even just because I'm in it. It's honestly <laughs> to one of my favorite songs of his too. So it's yeah. like so dope to be able to have been a part of that. Um, and it's funny because my sister actually had a show at City Miyoko Hall. Miyoko or Janae? Uh, Janae. Mm -hmm. But when we, we were all there, me and, and then Miyoko was my older sister who was in the video with me as well. We're like, dang, the last time we were on these steps is when we shot the Diamonds and Pearls video. So it was like, it was like a surreal kind of moment. Um, Do you remember anything from that shoot? Like Yes, I remember. Yeah, because once again, my father, you know, the first show I ever went to as a child, like I, we had to have like the, what are the things they put on the kids? Because the music's too loud, the little headphones. Oh, uh, earplugs, yeah. right? But like the big ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Purple Rain, you know, my father loved Prince, so that's like, we were very familiar with his work. You know, it's not like we were on set like, who, you know, some kids, they're just like, I don't know who you are. You know, we knew, we were excited, um, and it was, I remember him coming out with the afro, though. Even though his hair wasn't the afro in the video, but I was, was like, we were, straight. we were like, that's Prince with the afro. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was, it was cool. We were just like staring the whole time, like. Okay. He was, like, teaching you guys or something. Right, like, right. When it's, like, black and white. Right. We have on school uniforms. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was definitely a cool experience. I remember that. Like, it, I don't remember too much from being, like, you know, 
10 and under, but I remember that day. I remember the riots. Yeah. Yeah. So he actually ended up covering a song of yours. Well, not covering, so you sampling a song that you had made. Yeah, he sampled. So I did a song. Um, I put a mixtape out. Uh, but actually, when I returned from my break, mm -hmm. um, Battlefield America, I did a song called Blinded. And he actually, yeah, he sampled the whole beat. And then I had some, some, uh, I had some, some, some little Kim uns in there. And, and he kept yeah. those. I was like, yes, he kept the uns. Um, and he did some <laughs> of his own uns too in there. Um, so once again, completely thought it was a joke when my team called and they're like, yeah, you. You know, you need to come sign these papers off. Um, Prince sampled your song for his new album. I'm like, why are you guys playing with me? Like, is this an April Fool's joke? Like, what? They're like, we're serious. They sent me a picture, and it's like, I see the, you know, Paisley Park imprint. And I'm yeah. like, oh, you guys are for real. I'm like, Prince don't sample people. Like, I don't. So it was, it was definitely a dope moment for me. That's amazing. He was listening, you know? Yes. That's the best part. And that's the thing. I'm like, how did you, you know? It's funny because, um... Like, years later, you know, I ended up, you know, we became friends. And he was like, yeah, like, a lot of the dancers and just people I'm around, like, they were playing the music. And I'm like, yeah. Then I had to remind him, like, you know I was in Diamonds and Pearls. And he was like, and then he remembered. He was like, oh, my gosh, that was you. And so it was just like a cool, like, That's cool. moment. <laughs> That's cool. So, like, you know, let's go back to it's been a year since he passed away. Yes. Where were you when you received the news? And I know, like, you had a photo of yourself uh, with a, a next to a prince. Yeah, that mural. Yeah, yeah that, mural, that was so. in the bay. I had to get that. I was like, this is so dope. Um, I was at home. I was on my way to rehearsal, and I was like, nope, I can't go. So it was sad. <laughs> and I just read a great article in The Hollywood Reporter that was talking about Prince was very uh, a staunch advocate for music's, musicians' rights and then just knowing how the value of your music. Yes. And now that you're independent, like, and when you decide to go independent, where, where you feel, did you feel like you were taking advice from someone that has done this before, or? Definitely. Um, it was, like, you know, he would always say, like, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, just have control of, you know, that was like an inspiration, honestly. Yeah, that was were words that would come from him. He was always, you know, empowering, you know, artists coming up and letting them know, like, you know, the ins and outs of it. Um, so that definitely helped with, with confidence as far as, you know, going the independent route, for sure. <laughs> so when are we going to get your debut album? When's that, when's that uh, coming? It's going to come later this year. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah. how are you going to advance Dopamine? Because Dopamine was, like, so lit. And, that, like, now to put out an album, it's well, like... Well, there's setting... more where that came from. And that was the whole thing. Like, I, I'm constantly, constantly, constantly recording. And it's like, I'm like, I don't want to sit on this music. You know what I mean? I feel like in this day and time, too, that is the the pro of this same time of like internet, you know, you, you don't have to wait, you know, you can, and fans can tell you like, okay, this is what I like, that's what I don't like, you know, we love this song, we don't, and I'm just like, you know, I want to release it, and, and it's just what it was, but I have a lot more where that came from, so that's just, you know, the appetizer. <laughs> <laughs> we're just getting started. Yes. So I know you're very much into signs, you're Scorpio. I am a Scorpio. Oh, you did your research. Yes. What's um, your sign? So I'll, so I was actually, so I'm a Gemini. Okay. And I will totally admit I am not that much into signs. All I know is that whenever I tell people I'm a Gemini, they have dozens of preconceived notions. So what welcome, does it mean? Welcome to my world. We're, we're the two signs that people go, they go the other way. Gemini and Scorpio, which is weird because I get along with Gemini just fine. Like, I think you guys are amazing. Yeah, I think we're doing great. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, come on, Tupac, Biggie. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on. I, I feel like Gemini's are the best. Prince was a Gemini. Kanye's Besides Gemini. Besides Scorpio. I'm just like... <laughs> so what are the other signs that you were very, very much into besides Scorpio and Gemini? That I'm into? The into in the way, that, like, as in, like, these are good people. Every single time you see them, they're good people. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's good people in every sign. Um, if you're saying, like, signs that I usually, like, I usually can spot other water signs, which are Pisces and Cancers, just because in Scorpio is the third um, water sign, but... That I would say that I tend to have around me a lot is like other Scorpios. <laughs> um, what else? Gemini's. I'm I'm really good friends with a lot of Gemini's actually. And I'm not just saying that because you're here. Mm -hmm. um, what other sign? Cancer. Think, right? Well, yeah, the the other water signs: Pisces and, and Cancer. Pisces and Cancer. Libras are cool. Like I said, there's there's cool everybody's a Libra. Right. I feel though. Really? Yeah, I feel like every time I meet someone, it's like, I'm a Libra, I'm a Libra. No, I I'm feel like Libra. everybody's a Leo. Really? Yes. But maybe it's because Leos, see, now this I can say, Leos <laughs> and, and Scorpios, I think are the two signs the most that have their sign tattooed on them. Like, those are two signs, If they're okay. even though I don't, but like, every Scorpio, almost that I know, has a scorpion tattoo. Every Leo <laughs> has a lion somewhere on your body, so I don't know. 
What are the dates of Scorpio one, again, real quick? Scorpio is October. Okay, don't call me. I, I think it's the 23rd. Okay. Or 24th, I forget. And then it ends on the 22nd or 23rd of November. So I'm like that last week. I'm a Scorpio 3. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. um, one, another thing I want to talk about is uh, Ty Dolla Sign. You've done some great work with him. And it feels like Ty Dolla Sign has this like, amazing crossover potential. I once heard someone that all he has to do is just be in the studio. So what is it like working with Ty Dolla Sign and like, the influence he has in some of your records? And you know, we see him also being from LA as well. Yeah, well, that's what makes it dope, too. Um, with Ty, I've known Ty since I was younger. So that, you know, it's just like we just have a natural chemistry anyway. So shout out to Ty. Um, you know, the West Coast connection as well. And, um, yeah, like, people don't know, like, he's like a musician. Like, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, he plays instruments. And he's, like, actually one of my favorite artists in the industry, you know, today. I mean, hence, it's probably why he is on so many songs, you know? Like, he's like our new Nate dog. <laughs> <laughs> for real, like yeah, it's, it's, a song and a song without time on it. For real, it sounds like it. We have some uh, audience questions. Make Ooh. sure you tell them your sign first. Before you gotta you tell me your sign, Hi, yeah. Mila. I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> Capricorn, woo. yes. Um, my mother is a huge fan of Complete. She plays it in the car oh. all the time. Just to say that, um, I just wanted to know what inspired the visuals for Dopamine, such as New Crib. What inspired it? Because I see that the visuals you did put out was very artistic. What inspired it? Um, well, kind of back to what I was saying with him. Like, I kind of, obviously, I wanted to do, you know, what the song was, not say typically about, but, you know, literally showing me moving out. And then I just wanted to do a flip of, like, okay, what, how I could artistically say that as well, hence, like, going back and forth between, like, me chained to the wall and then, but I, even though I'm moving out, I'm kind of stuck in the past. You know what I mean? Um, kind of reminiscing. So that was the inspiration behind that. Hi, Mila. I'm Eileen. I am a Sagittarius. Ooh. Ooh. My daddy is Sagittarius. <laughs> Y'all are fun. <laughs> I try my best. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, how do you work up your inspiration to write a song? Do you get inspired mostly like, like people and their stories around you? Is it all you? How does that um, work? I would say it's a little bit of both. I would say it's, it's more so those things that I've gone through. But, you know, every now and then it can be, you know, a story that I've heard or, you know, something my friend, you know, conversations that we've had. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a bit of both. <laughs> we have one more. Hello. Thank Lakers, you. hey. <laughs> you from L.A.? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank, thank you for being here. So uh, which, rap, which rapper would you like to uh, collaborate with? Who's your, uh, did, you, did, did you haven't worked with yet? What's your sign, by the way? Oh, Capricorn. Capricorn. Oh, Capricorns are in the house. Um, that I haven't worked with yet. Okay, one of my favorite artists right now is Frank Ocean. So yeah, he's he's super dope. I would want to work with him. Yeah. Frank Ocean's super dope. Yeah, he's like a unicorn. <laughs> if, yeah, you're right. Like, yeah, like this just Frank popped Ocean? on <laughs> this earth to make amazing music. Yeah. What do you think of Kendrick's album? Oh, and Bone Thugs. Like I love Bone Thugs and Harmony. Like I want to do a song with them. Period. Which is your favorite one? My, my favorite Bone Thugs yeah. member? Oh, but see, as a group, as a whole, because they brought them harmonies, like... I know. You know bone, what I'm saying? Bone, they, bone, uh... Bone. But probably busy and crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they be so in pocket. <laughs> they be so in pocket. <laughs> and what did you think of Kendrick's album? Loved it. Loved it, loved it. Um, actually got to see the first weekend of Coachella. So, I'm, so I got to see, like, a lot of the Man. songs live, and it was, like, it's probably... Like that song, Love, like literally everyone around me is irritated because I play it like so much. Featuring Zakari, yeah. Right, like mm -hmm. that's my favorite song right now, literally. It, I, I just heard a great, you're supposed to listen to it backwards. Besides the songs on Dopamine. <laughs> <laughs> listen to the song, listen to Kendrick's album backwards. Apparently it sounds like an entirely different album that way. Wait, how, but how do I do that? It's just put, started at Duckworth and just head, st head back. Oh, you mean the track list? Yeah, track list. Oh, I yeah. thought you meant like reverse it. Like oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, I don't got that app. I need that app. <laughs> no. Uh, so let's get back to that question before we get out of here. What did you learn about yourself during that break? I learned to um, uh, actually to, to, not, to be fearless. You know what I'm saying? Just to go, to feel the fear and do it anyway, which actually I read a book and it's called that. And um, yeah, just to, to go. To not overthink, because I'm a, I'm a, that's one thing about Scorpios, we overthink a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, just going, not looking back. So let's not look back. Mila, thank you yes. so much. Thank you for having me. Can you please make some noise. Thank you. <laughs> make sure you guys download Dopamine. It's for every, it's nah. for wherever dope music is found. Thank you, Mila. Boom. Later. It's lit.